Now, until recently, most people couldn't tell you what CRT stands for, let alone what it actually means. Listen to this. Can you tell me what critical race theory is? No. Critical race theory? Critical race theory. No. I don't know. I can guess. Of those who know what the acronym stands for, critical race theory, critical race theory, what many still fail to get right is actually how the concept came about and what the goal is of critical race theory. It is a legal framework constructed by academics who realized that civil rights reforms, policy gains, and legal victories alone don't actually produce desired outcomes for black and brown people. Because in fact, there's still systemic racism, bias, and discrimination, and it's all very much alive and playing out despite actual policy gains. While critical race theorists simply just want to get to the bottom of that and understand how racial hierarchies are, system, are systematically enforced, the right wing has now weaponized the academic concept, scarring parents with their bogus CRT boogeyman, and turning PTAs and school boards into battlegrounds where parents are now fighting to ban CRT, which, by the way, isn't being taught in elementary and secondary schools. Jeez. To help me carve out what's really at the core of the anti-critical race theory debate is Khalila Harris, Managing Director for K-12 Education Policy at the Washington-based think tank Center for American Progress. Khalila, thank you so much for joining me. And, you know, from the few sound bites that we just heard, people don't actually really know what critical race theory is. So could you please just start off setting the record straight for us and telling the people what exactly is CRT and why do so many people now suddenly see this as a threat? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is my favorite topic, and I say that so tongue in cheek right now because people don't know <laughs> what they're saying when they say they don't want CRT taught in their schools. And I've actually been challenging people that when folks say, I don't want CRT taught in my school, uh, not to get into a back and forth about critical race theory in and of itself because they don't know what they're talking about. And um, it really is something being used to stoke flames of fear under white parents, frankly. We haven't seen in all that's happening uh, the same type of um, animation from Black parents, Latino parents, Native American parents, Asian American parents. Um, we haven't seen it because no one's asking them, right? There's an assumption that mm. parents equals white people. And critical race theory, as mm. you said, uh, formed by academics, and yes, a legal theory that has expanded into different uh, academic realms, such as education at the collegiate and graduate uh, school level. Critical race theory is really a way to think about how our systems have been built. If you take a step back, uh, were enslaved people and Native Americans involved in the crafting of the Constitution? Absolutely not. Um, were people who looked like you and I considered three-fifths of a human? Absolutely, in the uh -huh. Constitution. Uh -huh. So when we talk about, um, just like your previous guest, things like, you know, our schools are being taken, taken away from us. Taken away from whom? Who is the us that you're referring to? And so critical, re critical race theory, and any critical theory, frankly, asks you to think about the bigger picture of who is telling the story, right? It's that old um, parable uh -huh. that anytime uh -huh. the hunter tells the story, the, the lion is always going to be the bad guy. Um, but if you ask the lion, the lion will say, I was minding my business in the jungle. And here come this uh -huh. man trying to take my cub to make a, 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 a rug for their floor, for their cabin, right? So critical race theory asks us to think about the full spectrum of who's telling the story, who's not at the table, whose voices are being squenched down, right? That's a huge tenet uh -huh. in critical race theory that people tell their own stories yep. and give their own narratives. But when we think about what's happening yep. in schools, I don't want to get in back and forth with people about whether or not critical race theory is being taught, because frankly, there are aspects of it that show up in public education when public education is being done right. You can't tell me you're in 
a, a, a course about current events or you have a social studies teacher engaging their students in current events and they're not asking them to make sense of the text, um, to think about their real lives, to figure out where they fit into the stories being told in the pages of our news um, or, or on the internet where they're reading their news. And so those things do happen. You can't talk about the Civil War. Mm, you can't talk mm -hmm. about the Revolutionary War without talking about race mm -hmm. and its impacts and, you know, the people who yep. were freedmen that so, were fighting versus the people who were enslaved. So you've already alluded to all of this, but let's just like make it plain for the people and, and drill down mm -hmm. on the backlash against all of this, yes. right? Yes. We know who mad. Tell us why they mad. And, you know, just explain who exactly is weaponizing CRT and how Absolutely. they're weaponizing it, how they're going about it. Absolutely. So you see these same connections to the elected officials and people who want to be elected who are on the far right. Uh, who are saying things to people who look like them to make them feel like the boogeyman is coming. And we know who the boogeyman is. They're people who look like you and me. In the same ways that people um, during the times where um, redlining and policies to withhold mortgages from people were being set up, that, that you had the boogeyman coming so people ran from the cities to, sub to suburban communities. Those are the same things that are happening right now. And you see this very clear link between people who are lighting and fanning the, fanning the flames around critical race theory, who are also trying to limit people's voting rights, who are also trying to uh, tell people that the government, big government is coming to take something from them. And what you see in people's mm -hmm. school boards you see people not electing, you know, people thought there was going to be this big wave from all this money around school boards and anti CRT and people who live in neighborhoods with their next door neighbor who's shouting down the principal did not vote them into office mm. because they understand mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. their children's lives and yep. their well-being is at stake. Well, let's talk about that, because all these conversations we're having, we talk a l very little about the actual children. The conservative media mm -hmm. has been fanning these flames and it really has been, Absolutely. in my opinion, um, the culprit sticking its nose into this fight, making it a whole big thing. It's kind of like the problem doesn't really exist, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and the last mm -hmm. few months leading up to the November elections, of course, a certain cable news channel favored among conservatives mentioned critical race theory almost two thousand times, two thousand times. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how the students are ultimately the ones losing in this fight. The students lose when you have adults who are unwilling to keep them at the center. Um, you can't tell me that there aren't actually conservative families who also feel like more liberal families, that their children deserve access to a high quality education that ensures they can be global citizens, that ensures they have access to the future workforce, that they can compute, that they can do reading, that they can serve as leaders in our future economy. And we have data out there. There's a recent survey from Echelon where overwhelmingly conservative and liberal parents agree they want their children learning accurate American history. But where this comes mm. into play is you have young people who are in a space right now where they have much more access to information. And you have people then coming in who are saying that my child feels guilty or you're making my child feel less than. Um, but the question is not being asked of all parents. It's being asked of some parents and some media outlets, as you said, are using that to be the voice of all parents. I am a parent. You mm -hmm. are a parent. So are they asking us what our opinions are? Not, not at all. And when we talk nope. about actual policy, actual policy, you have children in buildings that are crumbling around them. You have children who have exactly. um, class that are 30 plus. You have children who don't have access so to So many drinking things that are so much more important. Yeah, absolutely. To the actual absolutely. educational system around yeah. around our children. I got to tell you this, you know, I, I think that the those of us who are on the more progressive spectrum do a disservice by um, allowing the right to drag us into these conversations and make central things that aren't really the thing that actually matters, which is all the stuff that you just named about crumbling schools and, and, and access to all the things that our kids don't have. Kalila, I wish we could keep talking about this. I appreciate you attempting to put this fabricated critical race theory boogeyman to rest Kalila Harris managing Ask director for K through 12 education policy at Center for American Progress thank you so much for coming on amplified appreciate you